right now is a now word stretch your hands towards elder david and say preach preacher preach, preach. i present to you introduce to some elder david day come on come on don't stop there. If you love the Lord, why don't you come on and tear the roof off this place? Come on, only if it's been good to you. If that's your best, I'll leave you alone. But I said, if he's been good to you, open up your mouth and give the Lord a praise. Come on. If you made it to the last Sunday in 2023, I dare not come into the house of the Lord and not give him praise. Come on. Open up your mouth. I hear your hands clapping, but I don't hear your mouths open. I hear the hands clapping, but I don't hear no mouths open. Open up your mouth and praise the name of the Lord. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, we were running this. Oh, come on, I'm shifting this place. Oh. Hallelujah. I'm shifting this place up. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. Glory. Yes, God. Woo. Yes, yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Certainly, certainly giving honor to God who truly is the head of my life. Amen. 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 I am glad to be saved. Anybody else in here? Glad to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Would you help me celebrate my spiritual father, Dr. James Henry Taylor? Come on, make some noise. That's my spiritual father. If you come for him, you got to see me. Come on. Come on. You come for him, you got to see me. Hallelujah. And would you give it up for the beautiful lady that stands by his side, my spiritual mother, Pastor Kim Taylor. We give glory for both of them. And to all of my colleagues in the faith, all the preachers and ministers of the gospel, God bless you. And to all of you, the saints of God, it is an honor and a privilege to stand. But there is a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. If you've got your Bibles with you this morning, we're going to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17. We're going to do a little bit of reading today, but it, it's necessary to understand the context of the narratives. First Samuel 17 chapter. 
And we're going to start reading at the second verse. And we'll jump around a little bit. When you have it, please say amen. Amen. And I'll be reading from the ESV version. And the word of the Lord declares this. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah and drew up in line of battle against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side with the valley between them. And there came out of the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Jumping down to verse 10, it says, And the Philistines said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Verse 16, for 40 days the Philistine came forward and took his stand morning and evening. 23 says, Behold, the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, came up out of the ranks of the Philistines and spoke the words, the same words as before, and David heard him. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were much afraid. And 32 says, David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he has been a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when the, there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. For he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, and David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will surely deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. Then Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him in a coat of mail. And David strapped his sword over his armor and he tried in vain to go for he had not tested them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with these for I have not tested them. So David put them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and, cho and chose five smooth stones from the brook, put them in his shepherd's pouch and his sling was in his hand as he approached the Philistine. Yeah. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with the sword and with the spear and with the javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. When the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, David quickly ran toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and fell on his face to the ground. Then David ran over and stood over the Philistine, took his sword, drew it out of his sheath, and killed him and cut off his head with it. When the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. The word of the Lord is blessed. And I wonder if you'll turn to your neighbor and help me declare my title on this morning. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, finish the fight. Come on, that neighbor didn't get it. I dare you turn to another neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor finish the fight come on and give God praise hallelujah finish the fight finish the fight hallelujah we're gonna finish the fight Ever since pastor asked me to minister, I know, I hope you don't mind me going back and tagging on to the end of a cycle because I felt it in my spirit that this is the end of a cycle. So finish the fight. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. People of God on this morning, um, I got a confession to make now because as pastor said, ain't nobody here but us and, and I'm not going to repeat it. And if you ask me, I'm going to deny it. Okay, I'm not going to repeat it. And if you ask me, I'm going to tell you, I, I didn't say that. But the truth is, I cannot fight. I know some of y'all in here, I know you like to fight, but I cannot fight. 
and, and, well, maybe I should say I don't really like to fight because, you know, if, if it comes down to it, I will fight now. But, but I've never liked to fight. And it's surprising because, I mean, I come from fighters. I mean, from my uncles to my, my aunties, my mama, my cousins, my friends, just fighters. Everywhere you look, they just like to fight. But they all know, don't go nowhere with me if you plan on fighting. <laughs> Because let me tell you, I'm going to go store off in the corner right there and intercede for you. I mean, I'm going to go, Lord, give him strength. Lord, touch him right now. Cover under the blood of Jesus because I'm not going to fight with you. Amen. I'm going to intercede, but I'm not going to fight. And, and, and I'm sure there's many of y'all out there like me who won't admit it that you don't like to fight. But, but you just don't like fighting. And for whatever the reason is, you just don't want to do it. And for many, the aversion of, of fighting is born out of fear, fear of losing, fear of injury, fear of embarrassment, fear of going to jail, amen, amen. And usually it's a fear of some sort of repercussion as a result of fighting. And so it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. And so regardless of how hesitant we are to fight, we all have to fight something. Can I get a witness? We all have to fight something. And there, there are spiritual fights like fighting sin or fighting the devil. And then there are personal or internal fights like fighting loneliness and grief and depression. And then there are relational fights when you're talking about family members or your friends or your spouses. But at the underlying root of all of our fights is fear. And this was no different as we journey here into 1 Samuel in the 17th chapter as the army of Israel was set to go against the Philistines. Now, the Philistines, they have their own army, but they chose to prop up one man by the name of Goliath. And the Bible describes, them, describes him as this man who was six cubits and a span, which, you know, scholars believe to be around nine feet. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never seen anybody that was nine feet tall. And if I did, we probably would be going to the bathroom, okay? <laughs> but he was nine feet tall. He was piled high with bronze and armor, about 100 pounds of armor. And on top of that, the Bible says he's got a sword, too, and a spear. So I got to pause here to say that if you just consider the facts, Goliath did pose a very legitimate threat to the people of Israel. They had a right to fear, fear, uh, to feel fear initially. And, and people of God, I think sometimes we forget that it is okay to acknowledge our fear. It's okay to say, I, I, I have fear right now. But the key is not to dwell and sit in that fear because then we allow it to exaggerate itself in our minds. See, the problem is not that we feel fear, it's that we let fear rule our reality. I'll say that again. It's not that we, it's not the problem that we feel it, it's that we let it rule. It's that we let it rule. We make it bigger and we make it badder than it really is. And it makes us delusional to what is really in front of us. And, and as I looked up the, the definition of afraid or, you know, fear, don't you just hate when you go to Google and you ask it for a definition and then it just gives you a reiteration of other, the word? So I looked up afraid and it said to fear. Yeah. <laughs> That's not very helpful if I'm looking for a definition. So I, I went and I found Dr. Dan Allender. He's a Christian uh, therapist. And he says all of us fear what we cannot control. And fear is our response to uncertainty about our resources in the face of danger. Fear is provoked when the threat of danger, physical or relational, exposes our inability to preserve what we most deeply cherish. The problem is, people of God, when we are face to face with something that is dangerous, we always compare ourselves to the danger. And, and we conclude that we do not have the resources to overcome the danger. And that's exactly what the army of Israel did. They spent all their time looking at Goliath sitting in fear. Meanwhile, Goliath is just posted up talking. He said, look, I I'm feeling myself. I'm a champion. I do this day in and day out. Send me somebody to fight. Silence. Nobody wants to go. He said, he said, come fight me. Nobody wants to go. And then it was not until David goes out and he's giving food to his brothers that, that are on the battle line that he hears Goliath challenging them. He then makes the decision that since nobody else will fight, I'm going to go and finish it for them. And so Goliath can represent anything that we have to fight on a daily basis. A lot of us have been fighting with something all year long. I mean, you've been in the fight of your life. Hallelujah. But God is sending a word on this morning that it is time to finish 
the fight. It's time to finish the fight. So if you give me just a few moments this morning, I promise I won't be long. I, I want to pull some things from the text. And it's a very familiar story. We all heard it. But what I like about God is I could have read it a hundred times. And every time I come back, he continues to peel back the layers of revelation. And so there's three things that I want to bring to our mind as we seek to finish the fight. The first thing we have to understand is that we got to see the bigger picture. We have to see the bigger picture. Listen, there is a distinct difference in how the army of Israel viewed the situation and how David viewed the situation. Listen to what the men say in verse 25. Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. But then listen to what David says in verse 36. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them for he has defied the armies of the living God. See, David got the revelation that Goliath was not just challenging Israel, but by his very nature, he was challenging God. So, so that's why when someone or something is challenging you, you have to understand it's not just challenging me, it's challenging him. And, and I don't know about you, but I'm confident to tell you today that there is not a challenge that he has not been able to handle. Anybody glad that there is not a challenge, there is not a situation, not a circumstance to date that he has not been able to handle. And see, the men of Israel made the mistake of believing that they were the only ones in the fight. To leave God out of the battle was their strategic error. It almost assuredly meant their defeat. See, sometimes we don't fight hard enough because we don't think long enough. If they had just taken a moment, their thinking was limited, it was narrow, it was one dimensional. If they just sat for one moment to see beyond their personal fear, to see beyond their personal safety, they would have recognized that Goliath was really mocking God and Goliath was provoking God all because he threatened his people. But I also got to let you know, this is so much bigger than you people of God. You have to understand that if the devil comes after one of us, he'll come after all of God's people. Uh huh. The Bible already told us in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, be sober minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And it says, resist him, firm in your faith. Here's the key part. Knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. <laughs> So I know it seems personal. I know it seems hard, but you got to recognize that the body of believers are at war. It's not just you. The body of believers are at war. And so you have to have strength enough to know like David that it was so much bigger than him. When you're fighting something, somebody else is fighting the very same thing. Can I get a witness in here? A threat to one is a threat to all. Amen. And because God has all the resources, you can drive out that fear and stand united in knowing that if God's people are under attack, he is not far behind. He will not look at you and let you suffer. If God's people are under attack, he is somewhere in the area. So that's why the first thing you got to know is you got to acknowledge the bigger picture. It's not just about me. It's not just about you. It's about the body of believers. The second thing that you have to understand, people of God, is you've got to know who you are. Yeah. Look back at the text when David comes back. He, he's heard Goliath talking. Now he goes back and he says, don't even worry about it. I'm, I'm going to go fight Goliath. And, and Saul, you know, steps up to him. He said, oh, no, I don't think that's a good idea. You're too young to fight Goliath. And, you know, he's been doing this since he was a child. So I really don't think it's a good idea for you to go. <laughs> but I like the Bible because watch what David tells him. Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them for he has defied the armies of the living God. Now that's a Selah moment. Because let me tell you, stop letting people tell you who you are. You tell them who you are. See, see, David had to set the record straight. He said, look, look, if I killed the lion and if I killed the bear, then surely I can handle this. Sometimes you have to remind people of your track record. Listen, because they done messed around and forgot who I am. I don't know what you heard, but don't get it twisted. God says, 
is that as you finish this fight, you're going to have to remind people to check the record, check the role, check check what I did. Don't, don't get it twisted. I did that, and I will do this too. Yeah. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. So as we get back to the text, you know, David, now he done checked. He checked Saul. He got him together real quick. And, and Saul is like, okay, I, I'll let you go. But Saul gives him some armor. And David tries it on. But it just doesn't feel right. Because he has not tested it. It's not him. And so I got a revelation through that. You got to be careful what people put on you. <laughs> you got to be careful what people put on you. Because when you are in a fight, you have to be your authentic self. Okay? Okay, you got to be acquainted with you. You got to get a real touch from God. Hallelujah. You can't go to a thrift store to get this. You can't go to the dollar store to get this. You got to remember the real you. And I listen, listen, I may need security on my way out. But the reason some of you have not finished the fight yet, listen, the reason some of you have not finished the fight yet is because you're wearing other people's stuff that don't even belong to you. Woo. Hallelujah. You carrying stuff that don't even belong to you. You wonder why you bogged down. It's because it don't belong to you. You wonder why you depressed this because it don't belong to you. You wonder why you sad. It's because it don't belong to you. See, you don't 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 let people put stuff on you before you go to battle. Because it will weigh you down. I can't listen, I can't take that stuff. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 and 1, let us lay aside every weight. I'm not cocky, I'm not arrogant. I just know who I am. Is there anybody else that's got a witness in here? I'm not cocky. I'm not arrogant. I don't think I'm better than you. I just know. I just know who I am. And see, people get offended when you know your worth. <laughs> see, you mad and you upset because you can't treat me any kind of way because I know who I am. Hallelujah. I I'm not going to be intimidated because I know who I am. See, if David wasn't sure of who he was, he would have went right over in the corner and hid when Saul tried to discourage him. But because he knew what he had to offer, he stood steadfast and determined to fight. Listen, you can't intimidate me when I know what I bring to the table. You, you can't run me home when I know I bought the home. who I am hallelujah I feel good in here but as I dig a little deeper oh Jesus the, the revelation just kept coming I don't even know what if David understood how significant he was in this moment so just give me a second to work I, I've read this story so many times but look at verse 16 it says for 40 days the Philistine came forward and took his stand morning and evening. 40 days, he just comes. He's taunting them. He's talking. 40 days, he, he comes back. 40 days. And they're all looking at him in fear. But what the Lord said, the first revelation that I got is that some of us have Goliaths in our lives. People and things that they just keep coming back day after day. And they're tormenting us and they're taunting us and they're teasing us. But, but here's what blew my mind when, I, when the Lord spoke it to me is that Goliath is a symbol of a generational curse. <laughs> Okay. Goliath is a symbol of a generational curse. Think about it. For 40 days, the older generations of men of Israel, they just sat as Goliath kept coming back and taunting and causing fear and causing strife and causing doubt and causing worry. And for the rest of the men, all they did was waste the time talking about the problem. Just, just going on a hall, talking to it, just talking about nothing. Just talk, 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 about nothing. But nothing was being done. And it wasn't until David, the youngest, stepped up and did something about the problem instead of just talking about it. David was the generational curse breaker. And, and, and they thought he was crazy for going to fight Goliath. And let me tell you, they're going to think you are crazy too. But the Lord told me to tell you, to free you, stop trying to convince people you are not crazy and just do what God told you to do. 
We spend too much time trying to convince people and tell, I'm not crazy. I know what I see. I know what I need to do. Stop trying to convince people you are not crazy and just do what God told you to do. Because God told me to tell you on today that you are getting ready to finish the fight against generational curses in your bloodline. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God says in this next season, you're going to do what others before you could not. God is giving you the courage that others lack to complete the assignment. Would you give God praise for that? That he is giving you the courage that everybody before you lacked. Stuff that's been going on for years. Great grandparents ignored it. Your grandparents were scared of it. Your mom and dad made excuses for it. But you are about to finish this fight. You are about to finish the fight. You are the curse breaker. They started it, but I'm going to finish it. Hallelujah. They started it, but I'm going to finish it. I've had enough. I've had enough. They started it. But I'm going to finish it. Now, the last thing that you've got to remember, people of God, is that the fight is already fixed. The fight is already fixed. From the very beginning, David was confident in his victory. Listen to what he says. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. But you also have to pay attention to how David refers to Goliath. David calls him an uncircumcised Philistine. That means that Goliath was not privy to the covenant. He was outside the gate. So what does that mean, preacher? He was outside the gate. That means his defeat had already been assured before he even started the battle. It was already assured. That's why David said to him, he, he said, you don't even know who you're messing with. He said, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts and the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. And so I have a God who has already won the victory. I have a God who I tell you that I come in his name. Yes, now you got to also be careful because David had already proven that his resume was long and bona fide. He, he killed the lion. He, he killed the bear. And he, he knows he's got it going on. But the victory is not his alone. Amen. So we've got to remember that every victory we have is because of him. And not because of us. So when we fight the issues we're going through, we cannot forget who empowered us to win. So you can have a resume. But it all has to trace back to God. Mm -hmm. hey, you, you have to trace it back to God because if we don't, we will then create idols of our own abilities. <laughs> and so we'll begin to worship our abilities and not his. We create idols of our own abilities. And, and here's what we don't talk enough about. Is that trauma can sometimes train you that you are the only one who can fight for you. So, so nobody protected you, nobody covered you, nobody cared for you. So now you fight for yourself all the time. But in the fights against the devil, in the fights against depression, in the fights against the trials of life, you have to go in his name and not your name. Listen, because I can call your name and nothing happens. I can call David and nothing happens. I can call Pastor Taylor and nothing happens. I can call Minister LaDonna and nothing happens. But when I call on the name of Jesus... He steps right on in the fight with me. And, and some of you have left the battlefield and you gave up because you were tired. Because you were discouraged. Because you were, you were burnt out. But God says, get back up and finish the fight. God says, I've given you the authority. Now get up, get yourself together, and finish the fight. You are anointed to finish. You are anointed to finish. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. You are anointed to finish it. Yes, sir. Because he's going to get right on in there with you. And if you don't believe me, just ask the Hebrew boys. 
if he'll get in there with you. If you don't believe me, just ask Daniel, will he get in the lion's den with you? If you don't believe me, just ask Job, will he get in your circumstance with you? And, and you can ask me, and I will tell you, I've had an encounter with his ability and who he is, and nothing can make me doubt what I know about him. You got to remind yourself that there is no mountain too high, no pit too deep that he can't get to you. You have to speak out of your mouth that the same God that was with me then will be with me now. He is the same. He is the same. The circumstance may have changed. The season may have changed. The friends may have changed. The job may have changed. The year may have changed. But he remains the same. The Bible says the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the same. And I'm almost through now, but I found myself wondering, you know, I was questioning the text. Now, David goes out here to fight, but he doesn't use a sword. Now I'm confused. You got this big giant, and, and he's got all this armor on, and David goes and he gets some, some rocks, some stones. You know, I'm trying to put my logic on it. That's how we do with the scriptures, I know. But God said to me, the sword is too flashy. The sword is too flashy because when it looks to the outside eye that you have nothing, God will take that little that you have and use it to accomplish the task. So to Goliath, it looked like he only had five smooth stones, but he said, you don't even know who I'm fighting with. He had the physical weapon, but I had the ultimate weapon. See, see, the sword is too flashy. You front your move when you show them the sword. But I'm going to show you what I can do with these rocks. And so if he can do it with two fish and five loaves of bread, imagine what he can do with your little. So even if you don't think it's too much, even if you don't think it's a lot, I dare you just give it to him and watch him work with it. You may only have a few stones, but if you just give it to him, he'll work with it. Mm, hallelujah. But, but the other revelation that I got in the text is that you have to be able to discern what type of force is needed. Some of us try to approach every fight the same way, just brute force, boom. We ready to fight every time, every time, fist, 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 bring your gut out. You, you're using the same type of force for every fight. But God says, I need you to use wisdom, I need you to use strategy. Sometimes in seasons, we're using a sledgehammer when we need a scalpel. We, we, we tearing down the place with the boulder when he said, I need you to just take the door off. In combat, when they are on the battlefield, they have people who are assigned to determine how much force is needed because they assess the consequences of different types of force. Now, we, we don't win and we don't fall, we don't cuss, we don't kick, we don't scream. And God says, oh, the whole time I had it handled, all you had to say was remove them. You, you don't went to jail, you don't scream, you don't lost your hair, your you don't lost your shoes, everything. And all he said, all you had to do was say, remove them. But you didn't discern the level of force. So you were fighting on your behalf and not his. And, and, and so the last things I'll say about these stones, I was just so fascinated by them, but I said, Lord, why a slingshot? Why, why the slingshot in the stones? He said, because I need you to be far enough away when it falls. <laughs> I need you. I need you to be far enough away when it falls. So he said, put the rocks in the slingshot and shoot it from a distance. Because when the giant falls, I don't want you to get hit. Because when the wall comes down, I don't want you to get crushed. So he said, I had to use the stones and the slingshot so that what was on you wouldn't fall and kill you. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't want it to fall on you. So I had to use the stones and the slingshot. So by the end, David goes and he cuts off the head of the giant. And this serves as a reminder uh -huh. and
and a signal to anything or anyone that may try to come at us that the victory has been won. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to get in my seat, but I got to tell you that that. God says in the end, when you finish this fight, Pastor Preacher, uh, a, few, a few weeks ago, you're going to sit down. When you finish the fight, you're going to sit down, and, and I'm going to add something to it. You're going to hold up the head. You're going to sit down, and you're going to hold up the head. Ain't no more talking about it. Ain't no more discussing it. Weren't you depressed? Yep, but I raised the head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, weren't you in a toxic relationship? Yep, but I raised the head. Wait, 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 wait. Weren't you an alcoholic? Yep, but I raised the head of what was plaguing me. The fight was fixed for me. And now I raise the head as proof that the fight is finished. Hallelujah. So on today, it's time to finish the fight. Somebody say finish the fight. Finish the fight. You got to tell yourself, I can't keep living like this. This is the conclusion of the matter. It won't linger and it won't fester. Mm. Oh. Cause I'm getting ready to finish the fight. I, I may have cried many tears, but I'm getting ready to finish the fight. Oh, it may have knocked me down, but I'm going to finish the fight. I may have been depressed, but I'm going to finish the fight. May have had some heartbreak along the way, but I'm going to finish, finish the fight. I may have lost some friends along the way, but I'm, I'm going to finish the fight. I may have been mistreated, but I'm going to finish, finish the fight. I may have been discouraged, but I'm going to finish, finish the fight. Let's ride here. Is there anybody in the building that you said on today that you getting ready to finish? I know you talked about it and I know you stayed there, but God says on today that you are getting ready to finish the fight. I dare somebody to open up your mouth and tell the Lord thank you. Thank you because I'm finishing. Thank you before it's over. Thank you Lord for keeping me while I was in it. But on today I said on today I'm going to stand up with my shoulders back. I'm going to stand up with my chest out. I'm going to stand up with my hands lifted. I'm going to stand up with my mouth open. And I, 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 I'm getting ready to finish the fight. Finish the fight. Zelina, finish. Reggie, finish. LaDonna, finish. Betty, finish. Somebody, anybody, I dare you to open your mouth and shout, finish. Finish. Finish, finish, finish. Finish, finish, finish. Finish, finish, finish. I'm warring, y'all don't even know it. Finish, finish, finish. Finish, it's over. It's over. It's over. The fight, it's over. Put the sword away. Put the sword away and pick up the stones. Pick up the stones. Pick up your slingshot. Stand back. Put it in there. Sling it and finish it. Sling it and kill it. It's over. It's over. It's over. I'm going to finish. I said, I'm going to finish. Oh, I said, I'm going to finish. Oh, I said, I'm going to 
to finish the fight. I dare you just to open your mouth and tear the roof off this place. If you receive the word today that you're going to finish the fight, I want to hear the sound of the warriors in here. Come on. Come on. Blow the roof off this place. Come on. Let hell hear you. Make the devil nervous. I'm going to finish the fight. for me to sit up here and not praise him. I'm praising him because I know it's coming to an end. Finish. Finish. Finish, finish the fight. I'm gonna finish. Well, why don't you finish it with a praise? Go! Finish it with a praise. Finish the war with a praise. Somebody, anybody, when you're getting ready to cross over, finish it now. Oh.